Miss Jean Worthy O'Donnelly Crowd, Jean Worthy O'Donnelly Keenan, and my sister Elizabeth Worthy O'Crass, and I are here in Salisbury, Maryland, with our father. His name is Charles Dorsey Warfield. And your mother's name was Mary Thomas Snowden, and your father was Charles Dorsey Warfield also. Your maternal grandmother was Henrietta Stabler, and your maternal grandfather was Lieutenant, Lieutenant Nicholas Snowden, who was born at Montpelier, over in Laurel, and who was killed in the Civil War. Your paternal grandfather was Dr. Evan William Warfield from Glenwood, and his wife was Sally Ann Warfield. Your great-grandfather was Dr. Gustavus Warfield, who also lived in Glenwood, and his father was Dr. Charles Alexander Warfield, who was known for the part he played in the burning of the Peggy Stewart. That was your great-great-grandfather in the Civil War. Do you know what your grandfather did for a living? Other than he was killed in the Civil War, but do you know what he slipped, what he did before he went into the war? I read you born. Okay. This would be your mother's father. Well, he was killed when she was a baby, so I guess you, you wouldn't have much too much recollection. She was the youngest, and she was killed. He was killed in the Civil War, and she was the youngest, and was raised by her aunt and uncle, her Uncle Edward. You're killing me. <laughs> All right. Um, how about your father's parents? I think uh, his father was a doctor, wasn't he? Dr. Evan Warfield? I guess so. I think his father, your granddad, was Dr. Evan William Warfield, and his wife was Sally Ann Warfield, and they lived in Glenwood, too. Right? Okay. How about his mother? Okay. Uh, so do you have any person you don't have any personal memories of your grandparents at all then? Okay. Um, do you ever remember hearing anything about your great grandparents? I think your your great grandfather was um, also a doctor up there. Okay, um, so you never got to meet any of them. But your family goes it, back, way back into the um, 1600s in Maryland, I believe. Both the Snowdens and the Warfields, I think. Okay, what type of a house did you live in as a child? The first one I can remember was... Uh, Clifton, I guess. Can you tell us about it? Well, it was an old farmhouse. It's still standing. Well, I don't know. Didn't you visit there a few years back? Mm -hmm. So did you. I did. I, I, it has another name today, and I can't remember what the name of it is, but what's the name of the road that it's on? Well, there's a road that ran from <coughs> Union Chapel and uh, then went up to Daisy. Right, and this, this house, I know where it is, I can't remember the name of it, but it's on a very sharp curve mm -hmm. that goes back there. And then from, you were born in that house, right? right. And then from there you moved to... I guess we moved to Woodlaw and... How's it Woodlawn? How's the name of Woodlawn? <laughs> well, 
That that stood up on Route 97, just off Route 97 in Glenwood. On Cars Cosmo Road? Could be. Okay. And it was very near um, Bushy Park, just across the way from Bushy Park. <coughs> what other buildings were on that property besides the farmhouse? Church and houses. There was a log house. <coughs> the elders are just a lot of board house. Did you have a, was there a yard with a fence or a swing or trees or lawn? Can you describe it? <coughs> and trees, a very large lawn, and uh, a hedge all the way around the foot of the, uh, the lawn where it uh, went down to the, to the road. Okay, I think uh, the house is burned, not while you were there, but later, but uh, the spring house is still standing near a grove of trees where the house once stood. Right? It wasn't spring, it was a well. A well. Okay. But there's some kind of a little building there, isn't there? Over the well? There was at one time. I don't know whether it's still standing. I think it still is. Um, you stayed there until you were how old? Seventeen, nineteen. Okay. Did you help on the farm? Yes. What did you do? Most everything that pertains to farming, like milking cows and separating milk. And Taking them up to the uh, creamery, ready for shipment and so on. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. Where was the creamery that she took them up to? Mr. Hammond had a creamery. Where? Where he uh, took care of it. <coughs> took in the milk and uh, processed it and took it on over to the railroad station to get on the train. Early in the morning. Mm -hmm. the, the railroad over at Woodbine? Or? Hood's Mill. Hood's Mill. Mm -hmm. Where was the Hammond House? Adjoining farm, yes. Okay, that was on the adjoining farm. As a child, did you have a room of your own, or did you share it with someone else? You usually share, share it with someone else. How many bedrooms did you have? Four bedrooms, I guess you would say, and uh, another little room that uh, was occupied by uh, a young colored boy that uh, worked around the house and did odd jobs and so on. Did he help take care of the yard? And if necessary, he would uh, pick up the rubbish and so on. You had one brother and three sisters, right? Right. And then your dad, you were the youngest, and your dad died suddenly when you were about seven? Four or five years old. Okay, and, and after he died, you all stayed on the farm and, and for a good number of years. Yes, it was our headquarters, I guess, and a couple of girls got to uh, work elsewhere, like in Baltimore or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, what room did you all eat in? The kitchen, or did you have a dining room? Dining room. Mm -hmm. Did you have a big kitchen with a cook stove? Yeah. Anything you remember about meals or eating or? 
food from the farm or whatever? Well, most of the food was uh, grown right on the farm. We just have to hold it to the mill and have wheat ground and flour and corn ground and uh, corn meal and so on. What mill did you use? Rover. That's just down 97 a ways, isn't it? I was down at a uh, little town, a little community called Rover. Okay, Rover Mill. Um, did you have a parlor? Sure. <laughs> and a, a separate living room? Or? A separate uh, living room. We had uh, a living room and we had a all the way, quite a large hall between that and the front parlor. We had two parlors, one where we entertained a minister and one that uh, not used too much, unless we had company maybe. And you had this in addition to your living room? Yeah. Was your home heated? Wood stove and fireplace. Was it pretty warm in the winter? Cold as hell. <laughs> uh, did you spend a lot of time in the kitchen? In the family? Uh -huh. The whole family didn't. The, uh, of course, in those days we had uh, had a cook and uh, help that uh, lived on the farm and come in and uh, help with the chores. Special occasions we had uh, had them serving meals and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Are these Negro helpers or white helpers? Mostly Negro. Mm -hmm. And they worked on the farm. Did they get? pay or did they mostly get food and things like that for their pay? I guess uh, we took the privilege of having come in. I don't think we paid them anything extra, maybe. <coughs> okay. Did you burn wood in the, or coal? Burn wood, mostly. Did you... Uh, have to buy the wood, or, or did you have to cut it on your own land? Cut it right down the property. Did you have indoor plumbing? <laughs> <laughs> no, we had to carry over from the pump a while. Uh -huh. And did you have, I guess, an outhouse? You didn't have any yeah, indoor? I had a two more. Two more. <laughs> Did you uh, get electricity while you were living there? No, I had electricity in that house. You did have a telephone. Such as it was, 13 on the line. 13 people on the line. Oh, do you remember what year you got that phone? I guess it was around 1908 or 10. Did neighbors come in to use the phone? Occasionally. Mm -hmm. Were there many phones in the neighborhood, or were you? did you feel pretty lucky to have one? We were lucky to have one from a couple of standpoints. One and uh, to get the uh, service. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever use candles or kerosene lamps? Kerosene lamps, mostly. Mm -hmm. Whose job was it to keep the lamps Filled and replaced the wicks. The woman you'd find around the house. That was a woman's job, right? <laughs> did you have a cellar? Yep. And did you store your a lot of your foods down there? Some. Like what? Well, we butchered uh, once a year and had to do a little butchering down there and cutting up the meat. And uh, so on. We kept apples down there and potatoes. That sort of thing. So you did the butchering in the basement? The cutting up of it. Cutting, oh, after it was, uh-huh, to get the meat ready and... 
had to kill the hogs first, clean them, cut them up. Did you help with that? Some. Mm -hmm. Where, oh, you said you had a well. Did you have plenty of water? Whatever. I mean, the well didn't, it was a pretty good well, in other words. Pretty good. You had to have it uh, deepened a couple times. Did you um, do anything to save water? In other words, I guess if you had to carry it all in, you had to be careful about the water. Do you remember how you, what you did to conserve it? Well, those little children took bags in the same water. Saturday night? Saturday night. <laughs> so who got their bath first? Probably the oldest ones. Oldest ones first, on down to the little ones. <laughs> All depends who we are then. And where everybody was going, huh? <laughs> Did the dirtiest ones have to wait till last? Not necessarily. <laughs> they were all dirty. <laughs> Everybody was dirty on the farm. Huh? <laughs> um, how did you keep your food food cold, Dad? We had a trough in the uh, little building up behind the house, down the back steps. And uh, we kept cold water running through that and would set it in there. So that you mm -hmm. mean, like milk and uh, mm -hmm. stuff of that sort. Mm -hmm. Where did the water come from? Did you have a stream or something? Uh, a pump right there. The pump was right there too. And got out of the well. Did you ever cut ice from a pond or anything like that? Oh, yeah. At a pond down in Mr. Hammond's place. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'd still have that, we had an ice house, you know. Uh -huh. Just an ice that's be holding the ground. Mm -hmm. and keep it uh, covered in straw or sawdust or something like that. How long would it keep? Pretty much all summer. Throughout like the winter time when the ice was, the pond was frozen. Mm -hmm. Did you put ice in your drinks, like tea, or did you just have it cold, or what? Tea? Mm -hmm. Like iced tea? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would uh, get a chunk and crack it up. Mm-hmm. We wanted it. Mm-hmm. Get a chunk out of the ice house. Mm -hmm. So you said you had a cook to cook most of the meals and do the ironing and things like that? Had some, always had some mm -hmm. uh, help with the housework. Mm -hmm. Where did you have to go to buy your clothes? To the store. <laughs> I mean, like Ellicott City, or where did you go? Well, we had a little country store right across the field from us where we could buy work clothes, shirts and pants. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to get a dress outfit, you probably had to go to Baltimore, mm -hmm. someplace like that. Did you go into Baltimore very often? No. When you said your your sisters got jobs in Baltimore, where did they work? Well, Aunt Amy, or Aunt Irene, uh, and uh, Betty. Betty used to stay with us a good deal. When they were old enough to work, they uh, went and got work at a bookstore in town. Mm -hmm. Did they come, go back and forth on the train or stay in town? What kind of work did Aunt Clara do? I don't think she ever did any uh, commercial work. She used to do, take a lot of interest in the uh, things that went on around in the neighborhood, church work and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. I don't think she ever had a job, really, outside of housekeeping. Was she married there at Woodlawn? Outside in the lawn? No, uh, they held a ceremony in the front parlor, I believe. Did you um, 
how did you keep in touch with distant family, or did you visit relatives very often? They were horse and buggy days, what I'm talking about now. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we wanted to go to Sandy Spring or Ashton, we'd pick a, pick a day and uh, drive down there in a buggy. Um, did you get an allowance when you were a child, or did you earn any spending money or anything like that? Not really. I didn't, didn't, didn't uh, I don't know what it would be needed for. <laughs> didn't have anywhere to spend it, huh? <laughs> well, I could get our candy up there at the uh, Basel store across the field. <clears throat> a nickel was a nickel in those days. I had to do special work to get a dollar seventy-five to buy a bicycle tire. <laughs> so you had a bicycle, and you went back and forth to um, where'd you go on your bike? Just drove right around the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you got the bike? Um, you had chickens and hogs and... Oh, my mother made a lot business of chickens. She used to have an incubator out in the bedroom. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How many would she hatch at a time? Probably 75. In her bedroom? Did she sell eggs? Sell eggs? Perhaps at times, I don't know. We had a, we used her uh, and sold what we didn't use. Mm -hmm. Tell me, I know that you would take trips down to Ellicott City and with the farm wagon. Tell me about that, how old you were, and, and tell me about the trip, what you took down and what you did when you were in Ellicott City. Well, the trips we took down there took about a day. And uh, we had to take, uh, take feed down, like wheat, to the grain mill, mm -hmm. either for storage or to be sold. Uh -huh. And uh, what did you do when you got down there? You took it to the grain mill to be sold and sold it? There at uh, where the mill is there today, uh -huh. and um, uh, then what did you do the rest of the time? You spent the night in Ellicott City? Uh, as a rule, we'd uh, make a trip in a day. Oh, it's there and back in the day? Day and a night. Day and a night. Started early in the morning, went back late at night. We didn't uh, have delivery stables back in those days where you could put up your team mm -hmm. for the night. <laughs> and then you'd buy provisions and take them back to the farm? Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. If we'd eat anything that we wouldn't mm -hmm. get to the country store up there, we maybe would. I thought you told me once that you stayed in the Howard House overnight. I don't recall ever staying there overnight. Oh, okay. I thought you told me. Mm -hmm. So, how long would it take you? How many hours for the trip in the wagon from Glenwood down to Ellicott City? I expect it would take 15 or 18 hours. 15 or 18 hours one way? Or all, the whole thing? The whole thing, yeah. Okay, what, what did Saturday mean to you on the farm? What happened on Saturdays? Or did you, you told me once it was bath night, right? Um, did you go to church on Sunday? Yeah, that was a must. That was a must. Where did you go? What church? Most of the time we went to uh, the Union Chapel at Methodist Church. Have much about keeping the preacher at the Presbyterian Church. 
Where was the Presbyterian Church? Right down your line, but you know where that line is? Mm -hmm. so you usually went to Union Chapel, and that was Methodist at the time? Sometimes I went to Harmony. Where was that? You know where the two churches are over on the road that goes to, uh, from uh, where I used to go to school across to Road 40? Two churches on that road. I'm not sure if I remember. In the neighborhood of Rover. Hmm. That's about where you went swimming, too, wasn't it? Was the swimming pool over that way? You no, know, the swimming pool was up uh, near Daisy. Cattail River. Cattail River. Okay. Um, did you go to Sunday school, too? Quite often. Mm -hmm. You had to go by, by buggy. You had to walk. Did you walk to school? Mm -hmm. How far? Well, I guess it was a mile, between a mile and two miles. Was it a one-room school? Tell me a little bit about school. <laughs> well, I had seven grades. About how many students? Oh, I expect 25 or 30. Mm -hmm. One teacher. Mm -hmm. Do you remember teacher's name? Mm -hmm. What was it? Well, we had a band teacher for a while, the name was Smith. We had a couple of women teachers, one was Miss Hood and the other was Miss Phelps, uh, at different times. Mm -hmm. Were you good in school? Oh, yes. <laughs> Had to be. Did she have any problems with any of the kids? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Had to take them down once in a while. Mm -hmm. Did you take your lunch to school or did you go home for lunch? Usually took it. How about in the wintertime? Was it hard getting there? It wasn't easy. Tell me a little bit about Christmas on the farm. Tell me what your Christmases were like. They were wonderful. Always had a stocking with candy and nuts in it. Had to get to bed early so Santa Claus could come. What did he bring you? Candy, nuts, and maybe an orange. Any games or anything like that? I expect there uh, might have been a, some sort of a game. I don't remember what they were. Mm -hmm. Did you have a Christmas tree? Always. What kind of decorations? Pretty much the same as I have now. The one is elaborate, but the, some of them are homemade, such as paper rings and, and uh, stuff like that. Did you have candles on the tree? Mm -hmm. Never had candles. Too much danger of fire, I guess. Yeah. Uh, did you exchange gifts with each other? What kind of gifts? Well, something that was uh, worthwhile. It wasn't any knots and stuff. Mm -hmm. Things like clothes and books and things like that. Make use of. Uh, tell me about birthdays. How did you celebrate birthdays? The usual way. This uh, birthday cake and candy, candy and ice cream. cream. Mm -hmm. They had ice cream up there too. Homemade ice cream. Mm -hmm. What kind of gifts would you get for your birthday? I don't know. We got anything much for birthdays. What did they do up around there for entertainment? Well, we've done mostly up there in local homes. They could visit each other, have a little party, maybe, and visit a while. Mm -hmm. Any family reunions or picnics and things? 
Well, we had the old farmers picnic and uh, once in a year everybody would congregate for work. Have, uh, what do they call these fellows that take the wings? Oh, jousting? <laughs> jousting? What? Yeah, on horseback. Mm -hmm. Jousting tournaments. Did you ever participate in them? Did the minister ever come around and visit? You said you had a parlor for the, for the minister to visit. Did he come often? Not too often, but when he came, we took him to the parlor. <laughs> what did you do at home for entertainment? Well, my mother was a great reader. She would entertain us usually by reading a nice story from either book or maybe like uh, remember the characters now that they had in the Little Black Joe, mm -hmm. books of that sort. Mm -hmm. And they took what happened in the old days, what they call a yes companion. They always had nice stories for children. Yeah, the magazine type thing? Mm -hmm. Were there any libraries of any kind? Okay. I probably there was some in there towns nearby, but uh, we had uh, magazines and books. Mm -hmm. So you had to buy any books that you had or borrow them or something? We used to have some kind of book club, I think, where they pass them from one family to another. Mm -hmm. This would tell me that you had some, that there used to be a man who came around with some kind of a machine to entertain. Yeah, not a Victor Turkey machine with a horn on it. Tell me about that. Wind it up and play it. We have a few records that we'd sit down and play for us. Now, did he just sort of make the rounds of the community, or did you pay him for this, or what? No, I don't know whether they ever tipped him anything or not, but uh, he went from house to house on various occasions. What kind of records? Had one time, I guess. I mean, what what were some of the songs? What type of songs? I guess is what I mean. Sure, songs that were something like that program of Amos and Andy and so forth, talking to each other and things of that sort. And they would have some musical ones. Mm -hmm. So this was like a little crank up Victrola sort of thing, and he brought it around just to entertain people. Who who was this person? I can't remember his name, yeah. Mm. Was he a neighbor or just? He lived in the community. Mm -hmm. What kind of games did you play with your brothers and sisters? Well, uh, checkers and common games. Wait, mostly did you play with your brothers and sisters, or were there other kids up there in the area? Or? If they'd come to visit, they, they were permitted to play. Mm -hmm. We went to visit them. Mm -hmm. We used to play drop the handkerchief for enough of us. Catch it, all that sort of thing. <laughs> Hide and seek? Hide and seek. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have taffy pools? Uh -huh. Taffy pools? Taffy pool, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Popcorn parties and all that kind of stuff. Most of them, are normal. most of us are normal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this little school took up through the seventh grade, right? And then if you went to high school, you had to go where? Ellicott yeah, City, I guess, was the nearest. Mm -hmm. What did you have to do at school? Anything to help the teacher or any, any chores you had at school? Someone would clean their races and some would pick up the trash and throw out the old papers, things like that. But individually, what did you write on? Paper. Paper. Slates, some slates. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you uh, moved to Ellicott City? I 
think we all were doing that in uh, 1918 or something like that. And what did you do in Ellicott City? Went to school. And where was the school then? Up on top of the hill, back of the uh, Talbot store. Is the building still standing? I don't know whether it's still there or not. So then you left school, what did you do? School. Mm -hmm. and I never finished. Well, what what did you do? I mean, when you finished, when you how how long did you go? I think I went through the eighth grade. And then what did you do? Went to work. Where? <laughs> Doing little jobs around. Used to wash cars and things of that sort. Anything I could make a dime on. Did you work at the Green Cross Garage? Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Is that where you wash cars? So. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me anything about the Green Cross Garage in general? Well, I consider it a good garage. It kept busy all the time. Didn't you? used to go out to Detroit and drive cars back from Detroit? Oh, that was only once or twice during the war that you couldn't get uh, cars, uh, railroad cars to ship them. And so to go out there and uh, drive through that road back. And your brother, Edward, owned the garage? Mm -hmm. At first. So he went to the service. He went into World War One. You weren't old enough, right? I wouldn't take <laughs> So then you you stayed at the garage, or what did you do? What I'd already done. He took a, Mr. Scott in with him as a partner and took care of things while he was gone. Mm -hmm. Charlie Scott? Melville Scott. Melville Scott. And that was, didn't your sister Irene work at the garage too? Mm -hmm. And your sister Amy worked where? She worked there, so. Yeah, it was sort of like a family business then for a while. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And you lived where in Ellicott City? On Potosco Heights. And the name of the little cottage was what? It was up on Church Road. And it had a name. It was a cottage up there on the right-hand side, over the hill. I can't remember the name of it. It's still there. Angela. No, yeah, not Angela Cottage. It was further up, way up the Church Road. Uh, what else can you tell us about Ellicott City when you lived there? Tell us about the Fourth of July celebrations or anything you remember. Well, they were always having picnics and things like that. Like most small towns. Parades on the 4th of July with all the cars decorated? I expect, yeah, they used to have some of those. Do you remember anything about Yates' store? Mm-hmm. What do you remember? <laughs> well, we used to buy most of our Groceries there. They used to have delivery in those days. Kept George Washington and Daddy deliver. Mm -hmm. Was that right? Was he related to Mary Washington? Husband. Oh, really? <laughs> um, I'm, I don't know the father of the country. I know. <laughs> Mary Washington used to do some laundry for us. <laughs> Her husband, they lived on Fells Lane, right? Mm -hmm. And her husband drove the delivery truck for um, Yates' store. Was the old firehouse still at the bottom of Church Road then? Mm -hmm. Was it still horse and buggy, or? Uh, no, they later got a one of our 
just want to thank you. Where did you go to church in Ellicott City? Where? Just like no, went to the Presbyterian Church. The Presbyterian Church where the Historical Society is. Who was the minister then? You remember, was it Milne? Or, yeah. He was Luther. Sorry, I can't remember. Okay, so you left Delicate City and, and worked in insurance and sales for a while, right? I don't know whether I left Delicate City or not, did you? I was in insurance when I was old enough. And when did you get married? wife's name was Grace Reynolds from Calora, Maryland, up in Cecil County. And tell us where you met her. Well, she took advantage of me when I was in the hospital. <laughs> <coughs> she was a nurse. You had to have your appendix out in, in a university hospital. Okay. Uh -huh, that's the way I heard it. <laughs> And she was a nurse on another case, right? Is that how it went? I don't know whether she was on a single case or not, but she may have been on duty. Mm -hmm. And then you started to see her and became engaged, right? I don't remember whether we ever got engaged or not. <laughs> <laughs> so where were you married? Baltimore. Mm -hmm. yeah. At the minister's house. Mm -hmm. The minister's house out in Forest Park, right? You know all this stuff. <laughs> I'm trying to get you to tell me. You worked for the Frick Company. Yeah, after you were married, you went to work for Frick, right? You sold sawmills where? Oh, they're free coming to in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. yeah. so you traveled the back roads in North Carolina selling sawmills and other farm equipment? Furnishing machines, bears, sawmills, steam engines, tractors. Mm -hmm. The Frick Company headquarters were in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And when you were living down in Salisbury is when I was, Salisbury, North Carolina. That's where I was born, right? Oh, were you? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then you moved back to Maryland, to Baltimore, right? And we're in, in life insurance work again, right? Eventually, mm -hmm. I came back, I went to work uh, selling uh, automobile accessories. And then you moved to Catonsville, and that's when Elizabeth was born in 1930. Mm -hmm. And then in Catonsville, you moved back to Howard County in 1930, what, <laughs> 30, 35? And that's when your son Charles was born in 1935 back in Ellicott City. And there you lived on Columbia Road. You lived there for well, me. I was on the um, huh? I thought this was for the uh, 
What I wanted to bring out was that while we were living out there in L. Lincoln City on Columbia Road, you again went to the Italian Church, and you were an heir, and you also served as superintendent of the Sunday School for a while. Right? That's right. Thank you, right. Yeah. And now, of course, the church is now where the Historical Society is located. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about your living in Howard County or how it, how it's changed over the years? I don't know. Have any kind of a philosophy of life that you'd like to share with your descendants? What does that mean? <laughs> Words, of wisdom. Words of wisdom that you'd like to pass along? I guess you're doing all right. <laughs> Did you have a favorite philosopher or, or someone that you always uh, kind of looked up to over the years? No. Mm -hmm. 